Hey y'all, it's Betsy from Happily Ever After Etc. and I am back with another house video. So we are back in my Lula May farmhouse. This is a manufactured home by Buccaneer. I've had it for about a year and a half now. If you go back on my channel, you can watch my entire playlist that shows the setup, the delivery, um, few question and answer videos on the buying process. If you have any more questions, leave them on the question and answer video because I'm going to be doing another one of those once I have more questions. But today, I am going to be answering your questions about how things have held up. So I've had this house for about a year and a half. I bought it in October of last year and it is now March. So almost two years, next October will be two years. So I've written a list, so you'll see me referring to this from time to time as we go room by room. And I'm just showing you kind of how things are pulled, pulled how things have held up that are um, finishes or appliances or things that come with the house. So y'all have asked questions about like how the counters have held up, how is the sink held up, things like that. And most of these things are standard in the home. If they are not standard, for example, my porcelain sink is not standard. I had that switched from the stainless sink and the stainless um, faucet to a porcelain and copper, it's actually oil rubbed bronze faucet. So we're just going to go room by room and go over all the things that I would want to know if I was purchasing this house. Again, these are all questions that I had on how things held up. So starting in the kitchen, the sink. So like I said, I have the porcelain and oil red bronze sink as opposed to stainless. I really do like it. It's held up remarkably well, especially because as you can see, I paint a lot. And so one of the main things I use the sink for is cleaning my paintbrushes and it has not stained. Um, my mom had a porcelain sink in our last house and she was always having to bleach it to keep it white. I have not had to do that once with this sink over the last year. The only thing I haven't loved about it is the actual um, drain stopper. So down at the bottom of the sink, and I've had this problem with all my sinks throughout the guest room, my bathroom, um, in this sink, there seems to get this weird hard water line around the bottom of the drain, and the actual drain stopper just looks disgusting. So. No matter if I put this in the dishwasher or I scrub it with a brush or a magic clean eraser, like, I think I'm just gonna have to replace these because they look disgusting. But the actual sink is great and I love the oil rich bronze faucet. I haven't had any, any problems with that. Now, as far as behind the sink, the backsplash goes. I didn't pick the backsplash upgrade. So you can see I just have the wood behind there. Behind the stove, I have the same aluminum as the thing. So for the stove, don't have any problems. That aluminum is really easy to clean. I do think backsplash would have been great behind the sink because that wood back there gets splashed and it's very hard to clean since it's that shiplap. But it's just that little bit of strip. I'm not sure if that's really the most bang for your buck, if that makes sense. Now you can see the windows get splashed and even though I clean them all the time, they're just constantly covered in water droplets. That's a little frustrating, but that's not necessarily this house problem. That's a window behind your sink problem or perhaps just a me problem. The stove, so. So as you can see, it is a glass cooktop. I have read a lot of reviews of people that have a problem with this. I have not had a problem with mine. I do use stainless steel cookware on it, and I have heard that that is the best thing to use with a glass cooktop. So perhaps that is part of why I have such good luck with it. But the other thing is this. So when I first moved in here, my best friend, recommended this to me. She has a glass cooktop. It is called Wyman Glass Cooktop Cleaner and Polish. Not sponsored. I ordered this myself off Amazon from her recommendation, but basically you just wait till the stove cools after you've used it. And then you use this to kind of clean the surface and it's kept mine looking perfect. So between 
the cleaner, and the pots. Loving this stove a lot better than the coils. I've always had coils at all my other houses, and I found those so much harder to keep clean than this. So, love the stove. Oven is pretty non-remarkable. It works. No complaints. <laughs> then we have the counters. So as you can see, these are not real wood. They are a laminate. When they came and fixed everything, they did have to cut or sand off that had all these little glue fuzzy things underneath. But other than that, I haven't had any problems and that was more of a manufactured problem than a actual problem with the countertops. Now, a lot of the reviews I've watched have said that like the corners are coming unglued because this is laminate, specifically this corner. Maybe because people are going back and forth from the stove to the sink. I haven't had any problems with that. Nothing of mine is coming unglued. I will say my one complaint is that I will just wipe everything down with a sponge every night after I cook. And for some reason, if I just wipe everything down with a sponge, I can see like the lines where I've wiped everything down with that sponge. It's not until like once a week when I clear off the counter, I give everything a good deep clean that those sponge lines go away. Now that's really nitpicky, but seeing those like sponge lines every day, that does bother me. But as far as the construction goes, that's fine. I don't have any problems with it. It's holding up just fine. So go figure. Then we have the cabinets. So this was the problem cabinet to begin with. They have plastic drawer slides instead of metal. And if you watch my things to fix video, this cabinet was at an angle. The one over there is now at an angle. So I think that is a constant battle and that would be my one thing in the kitchen I don't like. The drawer fronts themselves are easy to clean and easy to take care of, but those drawer slides, if they were metal, that would have been an upgrade worth doing. The plastic is just gonna continuously break. Let's see. Only thing left on my list here are the open shelves. So I do have open shelves over the sink. I like them. They do gather so much dust, but that again is not specific to this house. That is just an open shelf problem. I don't know if I would be able to have, you know, maybe dishes up there for my everyday dishes, using them every day, they would get less dusty. I tend to set my table, I have a whole tablescape uh, video playlist you can go check out about at least once a month, if not twice a month. And so I have all my pretty decorative things up on the shelves. So about once or twice a month, I do take those things down, rotate them around just for decor, but they get so dusty, which is why I have all of my things that I use on a daily basis in these cabinets. And I prefer that. <laughs> Last but not least is the fridge. I have nothing good or bad to say about the fridge. It works perfectly for what I need it to do. If I had a complaint, and it is a small complaint, it is that if I'm bringing groceries into the house and I open the fridge and I'm organizing everything, I'm putting it all away, it has a very short shelf life before it starts screaming at me, beep, 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 you left the fridge door open. That's not a huge deal. Obviously, I would rather it have that than not have that because if I do leave the fridge open, I'd like to know. But I just close the door, reopen it, keep putting my groceries away. But as far as like keeping it clean and smudge proof on the front and everything, it's very easy to take care of. I don't even really use stainless cleaner on it, although I probably should. I just use regular soap, so fridge is great. Let's move to the living room. So obviously this is the main room that I spend my time in when I'm not working in my office or cooking in the kitchen. This is where me and the dog play and watch TV and hang out. So it is probably the most used room of the house, especially with the front door coming directly into the living room. 
it gets the most wear and tear. And for the most part, it's held up beautifully. I will say right where you are, Mr. Tripod, is the bit of floor that is not covered by a rug in here. I have this rug and a rug in the dining room and then a section of floor that is just uncovered. Now the floor throughout the whole house, for the most part, has held up beautifully. And right along here is a buffer over the seam of the joint where the two halves of the manufactured home come together. I've seen a lot of reviews saying that joint comes up and gets wonky. I've put my rugs over that joint and I think that helps them not come up so much. I haven't had any problems, but the floor actually, right where y'all are, I tried, I cannot get a good shot of it on camera, but it kind of, because it's a laminate, it's kind of settled and molded to any bumps or imperfections under the laminate. And for the most part, the under flooring is very smooth, but you can tell if you walk around this house barefoot, there are two or three spots where there are just little, little tiny bumps in the flooring. It gets very annoying. Kind of like if you get a new clear protector put on your phone and you didn't clean it for dust first. And those little teeny tiny pieces of dust have now like created big domes and cracks in your clear plastic. Like it can be just the smallest something. There's a couple things under this laminate, small little things, but as the floor has settled, they're very noticeable. <laughs> As a overall house problem, it's only in one or two spots. It's not a huge deal, but there you go. Second um, on my list is the bottom of these two galvanized bump outs. Now I'm expecting that behind these bump outs is something that they're there for a reason. They are hiding something structural. I don't know. They're very pretty. Um, I do like them. But I can show ya. The very bottom here, there is, it goes across and up. And so then there's just this little track at the bottom of the galvanized thing that just collects dust like nobody's business. It's not a huge deal. I just use the attachment on my vacuum to clean it out when I vacuum. But it does get a little frustrating, especially since it's just a decorative feature. I feel like this is an update on how everything's held up over here and also an update of all the weird things to clean in the Lulamay farmhouse. Apparently that's what I'm worried about. All right, next up is the shift black wall. So this wall and behind the TV are both shift black. Now my mom has a old home. It is over a hundred years old. It is an actual, like she has real shiplap in her house and that shiplap is hard. Like I cannot put a nail in it to hang a picture. My mom cannot put a nail in it to put, hang a picture. I cannot use my power drill to put a screw in that wall. Like my brother has to come over from the next town over and muscle a nail into that shiplap. The shiplap is obviously not that hard, but it is close. Like I was really not expecting that. I was expecting it to be more of like just a face, but putting nails to hang this gallery wall was very hard. And in several places I had to resort to adding screws with my power drill because no matter what I did, I could not get a nail into that shiplap. So as far as putting in a nail and then moving things around, like, when you hang things on these shiplap walls, you want to make sure they are in place where you want them because you're not going to be moving those nails. For whatever corners they may have cut in construction, they did not cut that corner. This shiplap is the real thing. Close to the real thing as possible. Okay, last but not least, the front door. So if you watched any of my beginning videos with the fixes, this front door was the biggest problem when I first bought this house. They had to come re-straighten it 
so many times it was just not, it was not straight. Okay. It was not hanging straight. It was not working. I could not come in and out of this door. Now, since the little May has two front doors, that's not a huge problem, but I want to be able to come in and out of both doors. And this is the main one I come in and out of because for whatever reason, I live in the woods and bugs like that door better. So I've just kind of given it to them. When my bug guy comes out and sprays, they disappear. But for the most part, whatever. So it is, it is straight now. Let's see if we can do this without letting the dogs out. It opens and closes fine. I will say, however, that this doorknob, can't see it because of my coat here. Oh, my coat. Okay. This doorknob sticks so bad. So like if I turn it to go outside, you can't tell, but it's stuck all the way to the left right now. The actual, this part was inside the door. There we go. So I'm not 100% sure why it does that. I think it's probably just not the best. Like you can see, even though I've tightened these screws, it is like I can fit my fingernail underneath here. So I do think eventually I will probably just replace this doorknob. I do have the problem with the back door because I go in and out of these two doors the most. The one that I don't use is fine. So I think it's just a used thing. They're not the best quality. I will probably replace those eventually. Say la vie. All right. Next up, we have the hallway. Let's move down that way. Before we move down out that way, I don't have anything in the dining room that has like a quality issue to address and the the dining room is really more of a dining nook so it has the windows and it has the beam and it has the chandelier but other than that it doesn't really have anything that could hold up or not hold up floor is fine windows are fine chandelier is fine dining nook is fine the hallway. So this is the darkest, weirdest spot in the house. And for the most part, it's fine. I don't have any problems. Even the cracks over all the doors that were really bad after they came out and fixed them in my fix update video, I haven't had any new cracks. But no, that was just mine. I knew that. That knock on wood, they don't understand when it's me and when it's the door. But I will say, as far as how things are coming up, I have one, two, three, four, five doors in this hallway. Every single one of them has a spring door tick. They're holding up beautifully. I don't have any problems with them. Um, they're all very easy to clean if need be. Now the paint is a different story. Obviously, Look, I used to work at Sherwin Williams. You guys know that. So when it comes to paint, I know all the things. So I never expected this house to be painted with the best quality paint. I have sold paint to builders for regular stick belt homes, for million dollar built homes for years. Unless you as the built buyer specify you want a certain kind of paint, they're going with the cheapest paint they can go with, period across the board. So this is cheap paint and it shows the most in the hallway. If I walk down this hallway and I just glance the wall, there is now a scuff mark. My ring, my nails, my feet, my dogs. Shuggy, have you scuffed the wall? She has, her fur has scuffed this wall. So eventually I'm going to have to repaint everything, but for now, it is what it is. Say lovely. That's our motto, right Shug? Yeah, you're my little shadow. The only other thing, and this is not really a hold up kind of thing, so the doors have held up fine, that I would say about the doors is that over the course of the last year, moving things in and out, I do have one or two just standard armchairs that I have moved one of them into my bedroom. And I had to take this door off the hinges because even though these are standard width doors, 
it did not fit through this door. So keep that in mind. The doors are a little bit more narrow than I would think they should be. And while the lights and all the other rooms are fine, my fancy hall closet that they converted from a desk, no light. This first bedroom, the hall closet has a light, but my second bedroom, no light. So as far as holding up with that goes, it's fine, but probably gonna have to add lights to both of those closets. Last but not least, let's move on to the master bedroom and master bathroom because we have more things in the master bathroom to go over since the kitchen. Those are the main two places because you want to know about the stove and the tub. Come on. Okay, so there's not too much in the actual bedroom. The floors are fine. I actually haven't had any um, any problems with the floors in here, whatever little pieces of dust or dirt or whatever is causing problems in the living room floor. I haven't had that problem in here, which is good because this is probably the room that I walk around barefoot the most. The fan in here is great. Like 100% recommend getting a fan in the master and the living room. It has cut down on my um, electricity bill so much. They've held up beautifully. Although I do still need to get up there with the, a step stool and take the cardboard wrapper on the top. I like never notice that unless I'm specifically looking at it. The windows have held up beautifully and even the barn doors have held up beautifully. Although despite having been rehung, re-leveled as the house has settled several times, every once in a while the left door still rolls when it shouldn't. It really upsets Lady and Princess. Bathroom. All right, so as far as the bathroom goes, I really only have one main complaint. The tub is great. I use this thing maybe, maybe once a week, sometimes twice a week, sometimes twice a month, but I use it regularly and it is easy to clean. It stays pretty clean on its own but no stuff marks, no problems with it. Once they got the hot water turned all the way up, good to go. Sinks are easy to clean. They do get really dusty, but for the most part, they're great. I will show you around the bottom stopper, like I was saying in the kitchen, is that just weird hard water line. And that is my main complaint. And I don't know if it's the porcelain that they've used in this house or if it's our hard water because my mom lives five minutes away from here and she does not have this problem with her porcelain. But between the hard water in the sinks and the toilets, TMI if you don't want to hear about toilets, but my toilet, ah, I scrub it, I use, you know, toilet bowl cleaner, I use baking soda and vinegar, I use straight up bleach. It gets the grossest stains and it is not just from use because the guest bathroom, which only gets used couple times a year maybe also has the same problem so I don't know if that is the brand of toilet they're using the type of porcelain that it's made up of or our water combined with that if you have a house like this let me know because it is the bane of my existence and I'm, so, I'm tired of dealing with it the only thing I have found that really helps is legit turning off the water to the toilets emptying all the water and bleaching it Shouldn't have to do that. <laughs> and then the shower, after they regrouted it, when they came out for the fix, it has been perfect. I will say that the drain, the oil rubbed bronze drain, to me does look grody from time to time and I have to scrub it, but it does come clean, unlike the drains in the kitchen. So go figure, give you a close up. All right, so here you can see just this little bit right around the edge of your gardener. It's like where the drip line is off of the stopper. It's not a huge deal, but gets a little frustrating. As far as that goes, you can see that the tub, clean. Shower. 
all of that grout I originally showed you once they came to fix it up clean. I will say that with the rain head shower, I do wish I'd gotten that handheld attachment. <laughs> I just fill up my watering can and I wash this side of the tub off or the shower off. And I have my little scrubby dubber. Right, Shug? You are the best. TMI time. This is after bleaching. It looks pretty good on the camera. If you were in person, you'd be able to see. But, yeah. So, all in all, I love, love, love buying my Lulamay. I'm very glad that I purchased this house. I do feel like it was a good investment for my money. The things that have held up extremely well, I'm grateful for. There's only a few things that I'm really would say didn't hold up super well. Things like those hard water lines are very frustrating and the floor in those few places and the drain and the kitchen sink. But other than that, there's really nothing that I can point to and say that shoddy craftsmanship. So I do know after watching a lot of the original videos that um, people were saying had problems with the Lulame. I bought mine a few years after that, so I do think they've worked some of those kinks out. But, you know, at the end of the day, like I said, my parents built a very expensive custom home up in the mountains of Colorado, and they had, they had plenty of their own problems. So sometimes it's not you get what you pay for, it is you get what you get. And all you can do is have them fix something if you need to have it fixed. But for the end of the day, I do love my Lulame. I would recommend it if this is something you're looking into. If you have any questions, leave them down below or go check out my question and answer video because I probably answered most of your questions there. But if you have another one, leave it on that video. We want to do another question and answer video once I get enough questions to fill it out. So in the meantime, we'll see you all around. Bye. Come on, Shaggy. Wanna we'll go outside?